Hello everyone, this is video number six in our 10 part series covering Samsung Goodlock in its entirety here in 2024. If you've never heard of Samsung Goodlock before, this is a free customization suite that's available for free in the Samsung Galaxy Store. This is used to fully customize your Samsung Galaxy device. Links to the videos we've already covered in this series will be down in the description. And today we're gonna to be covering Clock Face in the Makeup tab we're also going to be covering Camera Assistant in the Life Up tab. Let's go ahead and get started with Clock Face. So when you first open up Clock Face, you're going to see a plus sign up at the top. We're going to cover that in just a little bit, as well as three tabs on the bottom, Face, My Clock, and Studio. Let's go ahead and start off with the first tab, Face. So right off the bat here, you're going to see a whole bunch of predefined clocks. And we can go ahead and pick one of these and try them out real quick. So you go ahead and highlight it, hit the little checkbox here, and then what happens is, is that clock gets applied to our lock screen. So this is what we're looking to customize, our lock screen clock. So here on the Faces tab, you can pick from a whole bunch of predefined styles. And a lot of these look pretty cool. I mean, these are some well-designed different clocks here. I like a lot of these a lot. We have some cool analog clocks. There's quite a few to choose from. So one of these might just be enough to make you happy. But if it's not, we have a couple other options. One is we can go over to My Clock. And this is where we can hit the plus sign and go ahead and pick different clocks that we created. We can delete them as well up top. Also, if we go back to this face tab, we have this plus sign here. Well, this plus sign in my clock is the same thing. If you hit the plus sign here, you're gonna see it opens this up. We'll go ahead and go back, discard our changes. We'll go back to face and we'll do the same thing. You see it takes you to the same screen. So basically to create a new clock, you can do it from two different areas and either way, you're going to hit the plus sign that appears up top on each one of those tabs. So what this allows us to do is create our own custom clock instead of using one of the predefined clocks available from Samsung. So you can see it starts us off with a little boilerplate template here. We basically have a digital clock in 24-hour format with nothing else. So right off the bat, we can change the format of this clock by picking different fonts. You can see here these changes in real time. We can also scroll down a little bit to pick whether we want 12 hour or 24 hour format. We can also change the formatting of how this looks on your screen. So we have quite a few different options as well as modifying the color for both the hour, the colon, and the minute. So you have a lot of different functionality here for stylizing the actual clock itself. Let's go ahead and go back to something more default looking here. All right, I'm gonna switch back to this style. Now what we have the ability to do up here is hit the plus sign. And this allows us to add more stuff to our, basically our custom clock widget that we're creating. So now we can go ahead and add the date. All right, so we can drag and drop where we want the date to appear on our new clock that we're gonna pick. And we have some options that are unique to the date. So we can bold it, italicize it, underline it, and we can also change the color. And we can also pick uh, which format we want for the date to appear in. So we have a lot of options here as far as format. So we have all of these options as well as adjusting the line spacing down at the bottom. So we also have the ability to add more to that. So if we want to add some custom text, an image or a GIF, like I'll go ahead and add an image here. Let's go ahead and pick this heart. We'll go ahead and move this down here. And let's go ahead and add another image real quick. We'll go ahead and do that. We'll put this right here. Now let's say we don't like any of these items right here. Like I don't like the placement of this heart, for example. You're gonna to wanna to go ahead and tap on the item here on the right hand side. So I'm gonna tap on the heart and then we're gonna go ahead and hit the delete button right over here. That's gonna get rid of our heart. Now we're back to our sun and we can move that around right here. In addition to that, if you don't like the digital clock, you can do away with that by adding an analog clock. All right, we can go ahead and bring that into the mix. And then before we stylize this, we can go back to our digital clock right here and delete it. All right, so now we're adjusting an analog clock. I think you get the idea. So I'm gonna move the sun around just a little bit. So we'll highlight the sun. I'll put it down here right about there or so. Now once you're done with all of your changes, you're gonna go ahead and hit this download button and that's gonna save your new clock right here. And if you wanna see your clock applied to your lock screen, go ahead and highlight it and you're gonna hit that checkbox. And then we hit done up top to confirm the changes. All right, now I'm gonna go ahead and uh, turn my power off, turn it back on. There's our new custom clock that we just made with clock face. And all of your custom clock faces that you make will show up on the My Clock tab here on clock face. And any of these that you wanna go into and edit, you can go ahead and hit the edit icon. That'll bring you right back into your edit screen. 
You can go back to get out of your changes, or when you're done, go ahead and hit the download button once again. And if you don't like one of these, like let's say I don't really care for this one so much, we'll go ahead and hit the delete button right up here, and now we're left with one clock face left. So another cool option that we have with clock face is the studio option. So this is designed for those of us that are using a Galaxy Watch. So what this does is link up with your Galaxy Watch faces. It's prompting us for a quick install to do this real quick. And now you'll see it loaded up a whole bunch of my watch faces from my Galaxy Watch. And what we're able to do is grab one of these watch faces. We can go inside of it here and we can edit one of our watch faces and actually make this our lock screen clock if you so choose to. So that is pretty awesome functionality. So you can see here, I see my watch face here. Let's go ahead and add something to it. I will go ahead and add the date. All right, I'm gonna go ahead and just drop this right below the face. And I don't really wanna do any other changes. I think that looks fine. I'm gonna go ahead and save it real quick. And I'm gonna make that my active clock, right? We hit that little checkbox right there. It's gonna confirm our changes. We'll hit done up top. All right, now let's go ahead and take a quick look at what that looks like. All right, there's our new custom watch face right there. That is awesome stuff. All right, that wraps up our tutorial for clock face. All right, now we're gonna move over to the life up tab and we're gonna check out camera assistant. All right, first things first, if you come over to the life up tab and you don't see camera assistant installed, you may have to install it from the Samsung Galaxy Store first. You'll search for camera assistant in the Samsung Galaxy Store. Go ahead and get it installed. And once you do, I recommend that you reboot your device. Go ahead and restart it. Because once you do, what's gonna happen is, is something really cool actually. You'll go into your camera application. You're gonna go into your settings. And we'll scroll down just a little bit. And you're gonna see here, camera assistant. So basically what happens is, everything that's included in GoodLock's version of camera assistant ends up getting baked right into your camera settings. So you're gonna have everything, tit for tat, everything's a match here. So we'll go ahead and prove that out by going over to GoodLock and uh, continuing the tutorial over here. But I did wanna point that out because it is pretty cool that once you install it, it'll be baked right into your camera application. All right, so back into GoodLock, open up Camera Assistant. As usual, we'll start with our three dot menu up at the top. We have a reset camera assistant settings. Just in case you kind of fumble things around here and you don't remember where you're at, you can go ahead and reset and get right back to your defaults. And we have about camera assistant, which is gonna give credit to the developers. All right, back on the camera assistant main screen, our first option is zoom shortcuts. So this is actually pretty awesome. When we go into this little sub menu, we have the option to turn on 2X, 10X, and 100X shortcuts. And what these options pertain to is this. If we minimize this and we open up our camera application, you're gonna see here we have shortcuts to quickly get to our different zoom presets. 3X, we can go up to 10X and change across these different shortcuts. So if we go back here into our camera assistant settings, let's go ahead and turn on 2X and 100X as well. We'll minimize this and go back to our camera application. And you're gonna see here we have two new shortcuts that have just popped up to get us to 2X and 100X. So you have the option of adding these three additional shortcuts here. Uh, by default, 10X is the only one enabled. The next option is pretty self-explanatory, auto HDR. Choose whether or not you want this option enabled or not. The default is for it to be on, and this is to help capture more details and bright and dark scenes. And for most scenarios, I do recommend you leave that on. Picture softening, so we have three different options here, off, medium, and high. And what this option does is basically soften up the jagged edges that we see in sharp textures on images. Much like foliage in a garden scene or the sharp edges of details of buildings, you have the option to basically add some anti-aliasing to the photo, so to speak, which basically will soften up those sharp edges. Auto lens switching. So this is on by default and this is a really cool feature and we can demonstrate this in real time. So what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna take my finger and I'm gonna place it on front of my lens here. And yes, I am touching the lens. I'll do a wipe down afterwards. So we're purposely blocking off one of our lenses. So you can see we are not on that lens right now at this zoom level. So what happens is when we have that auto lens switching option enabled, which again is the default, as we start zooming in, you're gonna see that it's switched over to the other lens automatically. And if I zoom back out, it's gonna automatically switch to one of the other lenses as seen here. So this next option, distortion correction. This is gonna be when you're zooming out a long ways 
and you're at different angles from your subject matter. And what this will do is try to fix the bowing or that bending you'll see in your object from an object that's far away. The next option we have is high resolution settings. Again, another submenu. By default, adaptive pixel is on, and this is gonna reduce pixelization that we see in low light conditions. This next option, upscale digital zoom. This is pretty awesome. So if we go back into our camera application and you attempt to zoom past the optical zoom capabilities, like we're here at 100X, what'll happen is, is by default, you're gonna lose some of that resolution when this picture gets saved because you're beyond the resolution capabilities of the optical sensor. You're past 10X, you went all the way to 100X. Something's gotta pay. So your resolution takes a hit. But if you choose to enable this option, what will happen is, is when you are zoomed in at like 100x, it is going to upscale that image so it gets saved as the same resolution as if you were only using the optical zoom, basically upping the stored resolution of your photo. So I uh, definitely might want to try this on and off with a few different photos to see how your zoomed in pictures look. This next option is pretty cool, quick tap shutter. So by default, when you're in your camera application, when you go to press the shutter, you have to press and release the shutter button for the picture to be taken. But if we go back here and we turn on quick tap shutter, go back to our camera application. Now all we have to do is press the shutter button and the picture will be taken immediately. This next option is fun to play around with depending on whether you're taking pictures of steel objects or moving fast objects, like say at a sports event. So what this is, is prioritize focus over speed. So when you have this enabled and you go to take a picture, it's going to prioritize getting a perfect shot before the actual speed of taking the picture. So what I mean by that is if we have the prioritize focus over speed option enabled, when we press the shutter button, our Galaxy device is gonna take as long as it needs to get a clear focus on the object that we're shooting. So if my hand's shaking a little bit, or if the object is moving a little bit back here in the background, let's say your kid's moving around a baseball diamond, you may have a real hard time getting a shot off because your Galaxy device is gonna take its sweet time trying to land that perfect focus. But if we go back to our camera assistant settings and turn that off, your Galaxy device is no longer really gonna to care too much. And as soon as you press that shutter button, you're gonna start getting shots fired off. I do recommend leaving this off when you're at sporting events. That way you can just get off two or three quick burst shots because likely one of those shots are gonna be perfect instead of you potentially missing the shot entirely because your Galaxy device is fumbling trying to get a perfect focus. So you might wanna play around with this setting. It does make a big difference and it will make a big difference on your action shots. This next option, video recording in photo mode. This is pretty awesome. Let's go ahead and enable this real quick. We'll go back to our camera application. And what this allows us to do while we're in photo mode, as you can see down here in the bottom, we can go ahead and press and hold our shutter button Give it just a moment. We can lock it into video mode, and now it's recording a video. I mean, that is pretty awesome. So we can quickly go back and forth from video and photo mode. If you wanna take a quick photo, you can go ahead and do a quick burst right there. And to go back quickly to photo mode and stop your recording, you'll just hit stop, and you'll be right back in your default photo mode. For our next option, we have timer multi-photo options. So when you go in here, we have a double submenu. Uh, basically, our default is when we enable our timer function in our camera application, it's going to take one picture. But we can go ahead and tell it to do three pictures, five, or seven, and we can specify the interval between when those pictures are taken. All right, so we'll go ahead and tell it to take five pictures with 1.5 second intervals. All right, then we'll go ahead and open up our camera application. Let's go ahead and start a timer. This is our countdown for the initial first image. We'll go ahead and pick the middle option here. Go ahead and uh, shoot a picture here. It's going to count down for five seconds. All right, you're going to see it go there. You see our dots firing off for the next shot. Let it go again. So this is happening every 1.5 seconds. And you can see here we have a dot for each one of the shots it's going to take. And it's going to wrap up here after the fifth picture. Very cool, a great way for you to get group shots with a bunch of family members and all that stuff. So feel free to hop back in here into the camera assistant and uh, adjust these timer settings for how many pictures you want and adjust your interval.
All right, these next three options are geared more for professional photography. We have DOF adapter correction. This is if you're using a DOF adapter, this will allow you to invert the image. So if you happen to see the image shown to you backwards, much like you're looking in a mirror, you will hit this toggle and that'll reverse the image for it. Anamorphic lens correction. We have a sub menu here. We can go ahead and adjust our anamorphic lens correction if we're using a third party anamorphic lens that would attach to your Galaxy S24 Ultra or other compatible Galaxy device. Again, this is a pro feature and this is designed to be used in pro mode. Uh, there are some certain limitations as you see here for HDR and for shooting at 120 FPS. Anamorphic lens correction isn't available in those modes. We also have audio monitoring. This is pretty cool. So when you're recording with your camera application, and when I mean recording, I mean recording video specifically, you have the option to plug in a USB-C headset, a USB speaker, a Bluetooth speaker a headset, any of those type of options for monitoring. And when you go back in here to a camera assistant, if you turn on this audio monitoring, this will allow it to stream the audio out to your monitoring device much like having a headphone or a monitoring outport on your camera. This next feature, camera timeout, is really awesome, especially for us content creators. So by default, your camera is going to time out after, I believe, two minutes. So what that means is when you're in your camera application and it's just sitting here, you're not doing anything and interacting with it, after a two-minute period, your camera application is going to close out automatically. That's not a problem with your phone. That's designed by Samsung to help protect your device from heat because keeping your camera application open for an extended period of time generates a lot of heat. So by going into this camera timeout section, we can extend this camera timeout to be all the way up to 10 minutes, which is where I always leave my camera timeout setting because as a content creator, it takes a while to get all my settings dialed in, to get the object lined out in frame how I want it. You know, by the time I'm ready to set up a shot and I have my mic on and all that good stuff, when I go to hit the record button, my camera application's already closed out and I have to start back over. This next option is pretty cool, dim screen while recording. Again, we have another submenu here. Basically with this menu, you get to pick how long of a time there is while you're recording a video before the screen starts to automatically dim itself, which of course helps preserve your phone battery. By default, I'm pretty sure this is off. That's what I leave it to because I don't want anything interrupting my view while I'm recording. But if you're taking a long recording, like you know you're just gonna be recording the same subject for an hour or something, I highly recommend you turn this on. It'll help save your battery. And besides, what do you need to keep seeing your screen for? And do keep in mind while your screen is a little bit dim in that situation, all you have to do is tap on it while you're recording. It'll come right back to life. And our final option for camera assistant, clean preview on HDMI displays. So what this pertains to is when you connect a USB-C to HDMI cable to a compatible monitor or TV, which is gonna be any type of Samsung TV and any type of monitor, as long as you're using a USB-C cable that has display port over USB-C. So if you have one of those cables, you can plug into the compatible monitor, you'll be able to see your camera application on the screen that you're outputting it to. So what happens is, is when you enable this checkbox, clean preview on HDMI displays, it's only going to display your preview instead of all these other options and all this other nonsense that you see here. That way you just have a clean preview of what you're looking to shoot. All right, this wraps up today's tutorial covering clock face and camera assistant. If you have any questions or comments about today's video, please drop them down in the comments section below. I really do appreciate your time. And as always, thanks for watching.